What's going on y'all? It's Joe from Petty Fixes and welcome back to part four of the Webbox build. Project Webbox has been a challenge for me and it's something I've been wanting to do for quite some time. Now a lot of people who know me personally know that I'm pretty much an enthusiast when it comes down to trying to get things accomplished and you know custom work and stuff like that. I appreciate a custom job on a project and for me Project Webbox has been a long time in the making. Now, since I laid my eyes on my first water cool computer, I was always impressed by the way the custom tools were bent and stuff like that. And I wanted to do something for my own. So I went on ahead and I finished everything up. I got all my parts and stuff in on a Thursday and today's Friday. Um, it took me pretty much all day Thursday and all day Friday, all the way, I mean, all day Wednesday, all day Thursday into Thursday, more, Thursday night, Friday morning. I had to be at work at like six in the morning, but it took me all that time just to get my bins right. And um, for me, it was all worth it because you know the, the the lack of sleep, being tired and stuff like that, it all worked out in the process. So um, with that said, let me go ahead and show you guys what the finished product looked like. Enjoy the tape. Okay, so when it came to radiators, I had a choice of white or black or pretty much any color I wanted to if I went with Primo Chill. But Primo Chill when it got here in time, I want to have this project completed by the weekend. So I've been reading a lot about XSPC's radiators and their fittings and all kinds of stuff. So I went on ahead and I chose XSPC for the simple fact that they had a white and black radiator and it more than likely is going to most definitely match my build. Everybody knows I'm going for the black and white theme right now. so. Um, it's a 240 millimeter radiator, it takes two 120 millimeter fans. So let's go ahead and open this up. So, as you can see, the radiator's inside. Here's all the screws. Um, it's going to come with all your mounting screws and everything. Um, nothing special about this. But taking a look at the actual radiator itself, it's a very nice, very, very nice matte, matte white color. It's like it's really nice. It's a premium finish. It's one of the nicer looking radiators I've actually seen in person. As you can see, they got the XSPC logo stamped in there. It's not laser engraved or anything like that. It's actually stamped in there. Um, you have your two G4, G1 fourth screw holes. Everything looks good on the fan density. It's pretty nice, as you can see. It's pretty nice. Um, I think I'm going to top mount this one. I may more than likely actually end up getting a second one, a second uh, 240, because I do want to do a front radiator also. So I'm going to play around with this for a little bit and figure out my configuration of how I want everything. Alright, so here's the next thing. This is a Thermaltake Pacific Hard Tool Bending Kit. Now, this is going to be my first time doing any kind of PTG bending and I'm not familiar with this process at all. So I bought this just to help me out. This is a mandrel kit. Now everything is made of aluminum. It features 45, 90, 180 degree, and um, 360 degree bends. Um, all these mandrels are definitely gonna come in handy. Um, it includes a tube cutter, and it also includes a deburrer. So that's something that you really want because you don't want any hard edges or anything rubbing up against the, uh, the O-rings inside of your fittings because you may cut them or they may develop leaks or anything like that in the future. So let's go ahead and check this out and see what it looks like on the inside. Okay, so as you can see, you have your rubber tubing. Um, this is what you want for the inside of your tubing so that you won't have any kinks or any weird warping whenever you're bending your tube. Um, here's the aluminum mandrels. This right here is the 135 degree and the 90 degree angle bending. Um, you have the 180 degree one. This is one more likely I'll be using a lot, a whole lot. 
and then you have the 360 degree one. Now, I don't have a use for the 360 degree one. I don't know what I would use it for, but I'm pretty sure I'll come up with some kind of crazy bin knowing me. Um, this is going to be the cutter. Um, this is one of those cutters I've actually seen people use online a lot. Um, I'm gonna try this out. And then here is the deburring tool. Um, really not much to say about that. It just takes away the jagged edges and everything. But yeah, that's the, um, the rigid tube kit, the rigid tube bending kit. So let's go ahead and move this out of the way and get on to the next thing. All right, so next I'll be opening up the Thermotake Pacific RGB hard tube fitting. Um, as you can see on the package, um, it does have RGB, it's 256 colors, and it does take hard tube, so PTG or acrylic. And um, the inner diameter is 12 millimeters, the outer is 16 millimeters. Um, I chose this mainly for the simple fact that, yes, I do have a black and white build, but yeah, I mean, everything in my whole entire system is RGB, like all the lights, like everything you could think of is RGB. So I chose this particular unit because I want to be able to customize in the future. So let's go ahead and crack this thing open. All right, so what you're going to find in here first when you first open it up is obviously the paperwork. I guess this is the warranty information. You got warranty information. Um, a quick please read before installing thing just to let you know things may go wrong. You know, thermostate's not responsible for some of the things that may happen while you're installing. And then I guess you got the instructions on how to um, get everything installed. Next you have the controller. Now, if you have any of the Thermaltake ring fans, you're gonna know this controller. Um, I have Thermaltake ring fans inside of my PC right now. And the controller looks exactly the same, except for there's a Molex connector towards the end. So this is actually what's gonna be powering the whole entire unit. So you have that. And then you have the actual fittings themselves. And there's six of them inside of here. Um, they're pretty big, actually. I wasn't expecting them to be this big at all. Um, they come in a nice black, like a matte black color. The, they're pretty substantially sized. I wouldn't expect them to be that size. Each controller has a four pin connector and another four pin connector right there. And I'm gonna assume that's for the RGB connectivity. Um, I haven't hooked them up yet or anything to try them out, but unscrewing this, you actually see the lights and everything inside of there. So if I bring it up a little closer, you actually get to see the LEDs and stuff. It's like a little ring of LEDs that sits right there. So that's actually pretty cool. It's pretty nice looking. Pretty cool looking design. There's six of them. Um, two for the pump, two for the radiator, two for the CPU block. Um, if you ever decide to add more, I don't think Thermaltake sells these in like single packs. You have to buy another six pack. This was about 79 bucks when I bought it. So that's that. Okay. So next on my list was the Thermaltake Pacific W4 RGB CPU water block. Now this does have AM4 support, which is one of the reasons I chose it. I also chose it for the simple fact, obviously it's RGB, but it actually complements the, um, the Thermaltake RGB Pacific fittings that I got. Um, from what I heard, it's got pretty good ratings. It looks damn good. Um, the black is definitely gonna complement my system for sure. And the fact that it's a pretty substantially sized water block, it's not gonna be like a little small, tiny water block that barely covers up any of the motherboard, the CPU area of the motherboard. But this is actually a pretty big one. I've seen it in videos. Um, I haven't seen it in person, so let's go ahead and unbox this thing real quick. All right, so obviously paperwork again, pretty much the same thing that was inside of the fittings box. Um, you got instructions and everything. Um, it tells you exactly what you need. I do have the AMD clip from what it looks like. So if I don't, then I'm more likely I'm gonna have to order it and I can't start anything without it. Um, here's the actual block itself. Um, like I said, it was actually a pretty big block. I wasn't expecting it to be so big, but it's a damn good looking block too and it's pretty heavy. It's got some weight to it. Um, it's pretty nice. You know, you have your, um, you have your fittings, your G14 threading right there. Um, it's a nice nickel base plate. Everything's nice on this thing so far. So there's that. Um, you have all of your, um, let me get this thing out. You have all of your mounting options. It's your mounting brackets. It does, I don't know, I can't see the AM4 bracket in here, 
I'm gonna assume it comes with it, but um, we'll see whenever I get a chance to take it out. So these are all your mounting options and screws and everything. Um, they even included some thermal paste, but I got some Arctic Diamond, some Arctic uh, Silver Nano Diamond thermal paste, so I won't be needing that. And then here's another controller. It's pretty much the same thing as the last one. Um, nothing's really special about it, just a basic controller. Hooks up through a four pin Molex connect and everything, so. That's pretty much it. I mean, there's not much to it. It's pretty nice looking, so. Let's go ahead and this aside and get to the next thing. All right, last thing is gonna be the Thermaltake V-Tubler, V-Tubler, however you say it, I don't know. It's gonna be that. It's the PTG tubing. It's the 16 millimeter um, outer diameter. It's a thousand millimeters per stick and it's a four pack. So, uh, this is definitely something that's gonna help me out a lot because I know I'm gonna make some mistakes in bending. And um, this is something that was pretty cheap for the most part, it's only about 20 bucks for the whole entire thing. So I was pretty surprised by the price for how much tubing I get, so yeah. All right, so let's talk about this coolant real quick. Now, I chose this C1000 clear for the simple fact that um, I didn't want any pastels or anything at the moment. I've heard some horror stories about pastels and how they clog up your system and clog up your, um, your, your, your radiators and your water blocks and stuff like that. And I ain't got time for all that shit. So I don't feel like taking nothing apart and cleaning it out once I got it all installed. So yeah, I'm not gonna go through all that. So I just got some pure clear coolant. I know you can use distilled water also, but I got this because I plan on actually maybe dyeing the fluid sometime in the future. And the clear is gonna definitely let that RGB shine straight through on those tubing from the um, RGB fitting. So yeah, I, I definitely stuck with the clear coolant. I'm not going any 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 other route right now. So that's the reason I chose this Thermaltake clear coolant, the C1000. I've heard good things about this thing also. So um, once it's in there, we'll see how it works. All right, so let's talk about the fittings that I got. So I went with XSPC for some of the fittings, for some of the, just the, like the connectors and stuff. Um, they were pretty cheap. A lot of other pieces that I were looking at from different manufacturers were pretty expensive. But um, I decided to go with XSPC, like I said, because I've heard some good things about their fittings. They seem to be solidly well made and everything. So um, I'm definitely looking forward to this for sure. But let's talk about the ones I got. So I ended up getting four male-to-male -male adapters. Um, more than likely, I'm gonna use these to connect this and this. This being a T adapter, and this being my um, my drain port. I definitely need the drain port. It's something that I really need because you wanna have a closed loop and then have nothing to drain it with. But um, these are rotary adapters, male-to-male -male rotary adapters. And um, there's four of them. So if I want to, I can use them for anything else also. This is a T adapter. As you can see by the namesake, it's in a T shape. It has opening on one side, opening on another, then it's an opening on, the, on another side. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect this to the back of my reservoir pump combo, and I'm gonna have it branch off into a T shape. I'm gonna have my, my, um, my ball valve Gonna have my ball valve on this side right here, and then I'm gonna have one of the thermal take fittings on this side, one of the RGB fittings, and then it'll come off and then go into its own little loop thing or whatever. Um, this is actually gonna connect that right there, just like that. So, oh, don't go nowhere. Um, so, this is gonna be right there, this is gonna be right there, connecting to the pump. So, yeah, that's all the fittings that I got, and um. That's how I'm gonna get this thing working. All right, so what you're looking at is that actually attached to the back of the pump. Now, it actually looks better than I thought it was gonna look. It's really rigid. So what I plan on doing is I plan on having my, my pump res in the case and then I'm gonna have the drain port come out this side and I'm gonna have a little fitting that sits over here. I can attach a, um, a um, what'd you call it, the little not the PG tube, but the flexible tubing or whatever. But you can attach flexible tubing to that fitting because I, I had it before to test this out, to test this pump res out in my video, um, my video review on it. And I'm gonna have this sit off to the side where I can just flex it out and just drain it that way. Or I can flex it out to the back of the case and drain it out the back of the case. Either way, it's gonna work perfectly fine for me. So 
yeah that's what it's gonna look like and then on the other side what you see is that there is there's an opening right there that opening right here pretty much I'm gonna be attaching the RGB fitting to that and um, it's gonna come out more likely it's gonna come up and then um, I'm gonna start my bending and stuff right there so yeah that's what it's gonna look like on the back of the pump you know all that stuff is gonna be kind of out of sight and everything but that's what it's gonna look like Alright guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video right now. Um, stay tuned for part 5 because that's the finale. Um, everything's going to be built on camera. Um, I'm going to have some pretty nice glamour shots, all kinds of stuff in that video. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this video short right now. If you guys like what I do, drop me a like. Subscribe to my channel. Share my videos. This is Joe from Betty Fixes. I'm out.